All right, yo, down a game here, going into a tough map, the Protoss map. Every pro gamer in the world, no matter what race you are, is saying Deadwing is a Protoss map, so obviously only PvP is on it in Pro League. And it's Classic's map pip, pick here, going into game number two. Bill has got to be shaken. Let's see if he can bring it back, tie it up on this Protoss favorite map. In the bottom right, in blue, down a game in this series, it's Bjell. Slaughtered in game one. Totally slaughtered. Completely destroyed. Up here in the top left, the destroyer, he is the Chintos Classic. And he's going to be very happy based on his style that we have cross spawns. Oh man, he's got all the time in the world to set up defenses, go for three base at least. Is he going to cannon, though? Look at this position on this pylon. Yeah, I'm getting that impression. It looks like it will be that Forge Fast Expand at the very least. Looking for that kill early on. Yeah, such an early probe scout. I think he's expecting Bjell to do as most Zergs like to do on this map. A, a greedy opener, perhaps even double hatch before pool. Yeah, completely understandable. I think at least it would be like a hatch first. Maybe some safety behind that. But for, I think maybe Classic will hold back on it if he doesn't scout the Zerg straight away. So he's like, oh, okay, he's not there. He's not bottom left, so maybe I just go for her Nexus first. We'll see if he still commits to like a, a cannon rush. Well, here comes the Forge. Here comes the Forge. So I think he's going to commit. He has to be careful about how he approaches with this probe. He knows exactly where Bill is going to be. And Bill obviously has, has no information so far in this game. He is going to hatch first. It would be crazy to see a pool first on this map, especially based on Classic style. I think this is a good move by Classic. I don't think Bill would expect it, but he mm -hmm. is checking. It's good if he hides it, but he's not hiding this probe at all, so he's we'll get scouted scouting. out by this drone. And this is problematic. I don't think he's going to be able to do it anymore. He's oh. going to try for it. All right. He wants that wall. He wants to try for it. At the very least, he's going to pull down four drones. Actually, five. He's going to try and get the bottom of that ramp as well. Looks like he's going to have to abort this. Well, that's fine. You know, that's completely worth it as well. He could even leave that pylon there, and it's worth it because five drones are off the mineral line right now. That is a lot of economic damage in itself. Yep. I think about that. Five, uh, five drones is 25 minerals lost per trip. Every, every trip you miss with five drones, that's 25 minerals, 25 minerals, 25 minerals. I mean, that's that's really starts to add up. Yeah, it would be much more than a, a complete pylon as well. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like, that's, that's if you cancel a pylon, you get 75 minerals back. One missed trip of those five drones is the 25 minerals he misses with that, um, with that pylon, so. Yeah, and if the Zerg doesn't deal with it the way Biel did, like, he could just simply lose the game from there, so it is a very hard commitment. So... So far, uh, you know, definitely I, I give Classic a lead. It really disrupts how Biel wanted to start this game out. He might have even been planning on going double hatch before pool, and now he's going to change his plans on that if that was what he was thinking he was yeah. going to do. I get that impression based on what that drone was doing. Uh, the, the drone was, like, scheduled to go up to that third base and maybe uh, put, put it down after he scattered. So that was probably his original plan, but at least he got a hatch first without taking any damage, so it's not the end of the world. Yeah. That, I mean, it could have been disastrous. So this game is, is far from over, obviously. We're, we're just getting started here. And I'm going to check for a third base right away here. Sees none just yet. Good deny here, actually, by Bill. And now Classic, obviously, is going to have to have in the back of his mind this wonder. Checks to make sure there's no hidden hatcheries or hidden lings. Really careful scouting here by Classic. Hmm. Very he, careful. Like you said, he's such a, a, a careful uh, a Zerg. Yep. I mean, uh, sorry, Protoss, in, in like a very defensive Protoss. Yeah, I was going to say, and I'm like, yes. I'm like, Wolf. Classic is a careful Zerg. He, he's a very careful Zerg, Wolf. <laughs> no. No, like, as you said, Moonlight, you're like, I didn't say that, Wolf. I, I'm just I never <laughs> said that ever. I'm just like, a, I'll just go with it because I'm going to support you, Wolf, no matter what. Thank you. Till death do us part, buddy. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Classic is, is definitely one of the most defensive Protosses we have at the moment. Like, I, I'd say, like, judging by his recent PVZs, like, he's, he's like, even more defensive than Rain, like, and what Rain was. 
And once upon a time, his Rain would always go for an eventual timing, whether it being on three base or two base. But Classic, he is so good at defending, and I hope we get to see that late game style that he that he did show us in Pro League, I believe it was. Well, I feel like actually it was in Star League groups. That's right, it was Star League groups that he showed us. Sure. Now, I feel like personally, this might be the best style right now in this matchup, especially on a map like Deadwing, because there's no Swarm host anymore. Absolutely. So if you you know, if you're going to be facing a Broodlord comp or something like that in the late game, that's much easier to deal with. Koros has known how to deal with that. They've been dealing with that for years. I mean, it's out of the meta now, but it, it's it's coming back, obviously, as mm. uh, Zergs have to do something in the late game to deal with this extremely cost efficient death ball uh, in the late game. So There's there's no answer to it in the late, late game because, yeah, as you said, there's no Swarm host, and he's the, he's probably the Protoss that's taken the most advantage of that fact. He's like, I didn't actually have to do anything. I just have to defend and get to that point in the game where the Zerg can't beat me anymore. Yeah, he's going to go for that quick third base by the looks of it behind this Oracle. Yep. Completely scattered out, but doesn't matter. He doesn't care. With an Oracle, he's going to be totally fine against us. If the Lynx caught this probe, that'd be great here for Biel. He's going to actually maybe get it. Nope. And the Oracle's like, bad choice, buddy. Yeah, I guess I'll clean these up. There we go. And there goes that third. Getting the wall up. Last wing is down. Very curious to see how Beal's going to respond. Yeah. Well, at least this time he actually got a spore in every base. That was one thing I was kind of worried about this time. Like, well, I hope you got more than just queens. And it looks like, despite that, he's going to sack a couple of drones. Yeah. Beal, you know, he's been very greedy. He's saturated every single base, got every single gas. So he's looking fantastic going into this. But this is dead wing, and it's going to happen no matter what. It's how you get to, how do you get into classic space? How do you actually do damage in this mid to late game? Because it is such a hard map to attack on. Yeah. Well, I mean, in this in this map, especially cross spawns, you're going to walk off creep with any ground units uh, across the base or across to the base. It's going to take well. In fact, we even see classic denying a tumor here. You know, you're also going to be attacking into four bases that essentially form like a small square, a small rectangle. They're all tightly packed together. They're not mm. far away from each other, especially once you kill that debris. Yes. You're you're like a uh, you know a stone's throw away from each one of your next eye. You're so easily able to defend Mutilus even because you're just bouncing between these bases that are not that far apart. Yeah, and you know, you got one choke at the front to cover all four bases from ground. That is it, like one choke to defend them all is ridiculous. It's such a hard map in the late game. And it kind of guarantees Protoss getting four bases as well, which is terrifying. Once they have eight gases, they can get anything they want. They can just wait there until they got that 200, 200 death ball waiting for you. Yeah. Well, this, uh, Overseer is going to get picked off here, but it scouts a few Phoenixes have been made. This is just Classic's way of making Phoenixes as a bit of a security deposit. If he's trying to rush me list and I haven't seen it somehow, I'll have these out. I can also clear up Overlords, I can stop Vision, I can kill Overseers, and uh, it's going to make Bjell less likely to go Mutilus here. Mm. Because he knows the Phoenixes are already on the map. Yeah, they're already waiting, and we do see that Oracle is still flying around, looks, scouting out everything he can. He's going to keep his eye out for any sort of Muta switch that might happen. And we haven't seen any commitment to anything from Biel just yet. He's still biding his time, just waiting for the right choice. It's Oracle again finding more damage over here. The support not ready for that fourth. Wow. Yeah, 11 kills on that thing already. Pretty impressive. Still flying around. Still got enough health to do some decent scouting as well. Could throw down some revelations in a bit later. Get a decent idea of what the tech's going to be from Biel. Biel uh, has banked a ton of money here. It's part of the reason why he's actually down in supplies. He has not, he's not really spending his money. Now starting to make a few Mutilus. Hmm. But there are already a decent amount of Phoenixes on the map. Yeah, this is interesting. You know, Mutas to begin with. It's going to help out. You know, it's going to be able to deflect any sort of War Prism play. Perhaps it might come on the map. But uh, what does he choose for the late game? Making a, a Hydra damage as the tier, as the high finishes. So, like, it's pretty late, actually. He could have made that a long time ago. It's like looking to make a lurker down here in Moonblade. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the choice. <laughs> it might just be <laughs> the one thing he needs. Uh, he's going to be a little disappointed there, I think, once that finishes. Yeah. It's like he's not sure what to do. Almost looks like. I mean, just simply because he hasn't made any choices yet. And if Classic figures this out, he's just going to attack him because he's like, you don't have anything. He just like, doesn't have anything. Yeah, well, that's like the one thing that is maybe one of the, the shortcomings of the staff from Classic. He's not applying that much pressure to really force out a, a lot of units from Biel until the last second. But now we are seeing that aggression come down, that War Prism doing a lot of work. Drawing Plus, the attention away. Yeah, this rotation. Look at this. You can actually get a, you can 
he had a hatchery from this actually, just straight up. Yep. He targets it. Those stalkers don't have plus two yet, but they still do a ton of damage to buildings. And I think he can actually just get this one easily. Either blink back down or recall. Yeah, there's absolutely not enough here. Hydra's only just coming out now. They don't have range. They don't have anything. Eulis doing yeah. some damage, but not enough. He doesn't even have to use his Mothership Core. He almost loses it to the Hydra's, but he doesn't have to recall. Look at that damage. It's ridiculous. Uh, he's having such a hard time here. Still three Phoenixes on the map. They're going to clean up the last of these Eulis, it looks like here. Yeah, they're just going to go down for free. They did a little bit of damage, like five probes, I believe. But that is not really enough to warrant six Mutalists at all. Not even close. Not even close. And Classic is even going into Storm, as he's identified, of course. There are Hydralists on the map. Storm's not bad against Mutalists. And obviously, if you have High Temple on the map, you can deal with the Vipers, too. So, Man, you can get Storm against Broodlords. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just such a fantastic spell to have at any point in the game. And and it's just going to mean like he cannot be attacked for quite a while longer. In this in this matchup, if you can afford to make a lot of High Templar, you just want to keep making them. Because yeah. Archons are going to be pretty good, too. Even against Ultralists, they're pretty all right. Yeah, they'll tank him for the time being. Well, mm. he's going to be so sad if if, by the t if he doesn't get to that base before Storm is ready. And even if he gets there before, he's going to have a hard time, I think. Yeah, there's enough force fields to buy that time, which is the other scary thing. Four sentries, essentially all on full energy. And he's got an Immortal in this mix. He's got, I think, another Time Warp. You might want to get these in position for feedback. So, Blinding Cloud's going down. Oh, Blinding Cloud's decent here, but Whoa. there come the Storms. Doesn't even matter. Uh, it really doesn't. He likes to walk through another Blinding Cloud, but with the Storm support, the Hydros have to leave, which allows the Stalkers to chase through that cloud. Another perfect Storm here on top of these Hydros. Another Storm comes down. Every time Bjell tries to... <laughs> oh, GG. Wow. Every time he tries to fight, the, the Storm comes down. Completely torn apart. And two games now, and that was kind of disappointing. Like, he lost that third base, so he knew he had to make a move and attack. I think maybe he didn't ha uh, have an idea that Classic was still on three bases waiting for this attack to come. And, you know, he got that Hydrogen so late as well. He, did, he only just had range. He didn't have speed, so there was no escaping that. That's why he, he probably just left in the end. He's like, well, I just can't get away. I'm losing everything. Well, it's like, you know, he has the ultimate tech. I spent a lot of resources on these Hydralists. You know, I can't like switch to Ultralist right now. Broodlords are gonna take too long. They're too slow. On the, you never want to use Broodlords cross spawn on Deadwing unless you're like already at his base and you're ahead and, he's, and you just have to finish him off. Like yeah. you're just never gonna want those. Completely outmaneuvered if you try for that, especially in that kind of situation. Yeah. So uh, that's like a yeah. Broodlords are gonna be that surprising if you get not the one that you you go towards. Then you're like, okay, it's time to push across the map. It's never gonna work. Never gonna work. They're gonna be dropping on all sides, flicking around your army and. He, he didn't even have that much gas bank after he spent all that money. He spent a lot of gas on Eulis that didn't work out either. 